I'm Marvel. This channel exists to connect gamers to MMOs they'll love. In this series, I play perhaps the most underrated MMO RPG on Steam, Project Gorgon. It's inspired by classic MMOs like EverQuest, Asheron's Call 1, and Star Wars Galaxies, currently sitting at a very positive score on Steam in early access with a demo available for free. Thank you for watching and subscribe for more MMO content. In the last episode, my furry friend and I finally made it to the newbie sewer dungeon to train. After our first combat, I learned a new skill that grants a 20% damage buff to your pet for its next attack. Veterans of Project Gorgon, is the word attack here limiting, as in Path of Exile's skill categories? In other words, do spells not qualify as an attack? I run up a ladder into a sewerway, flush with dinosaurs, yet notice my rat isn't here with me. Where'd it go? I run back down to investigate, yet cannot locate the disappeared rodent. Oh, it's cornered to the right. I run up the wooden bridge, and the mouse follows me. Remember this association. Thinking the pathfinding has been corrected, I return up the railroad tracks between the broken grates on which a moldy note is stuck. I tried to lead the sewer rat directly onto the rails, yet it is unable to climb on them. Developers, please address this minor irritant. I ask in global chat if there's a fetch command for pets in a situation like this, and Grelp comes to my rescue by recommending that I dismiss and resummon the pet. It works, but every time there's a rail ladder, I have to repeat the cycle. This area doesn't seem productive if I have to keep overcoming pathfinding issues. Maybe there's a better place to train. But as I'm deciding where to level my furry friend, I learn a new skill. Shrill is a 13 meter ranged psychic core attack. Project Gorgon Veterans, does this skill benefit from training in the psychology skill line? And what's the difference between a core attack and a signature? While my pet is likely lost again, I duel a 90s version of a Velociraptor. Afterwards, I learn Clever Trick, which looks immensely fun to experiment with. I presume that each type of pet has its own ability, yet how do you know what your pet's trick is? Can you swap them out if you like one from another? Will the husbandry system allow you to breed tricks? In the console, you can see that my pet has gained enough experience to level up. It's odd to me that it doesn't automatically level. After asking in global chat how to increase your pet's level, I learn you must do so at a stable manager. I should return to Cerebule Keep. Returning to town, I meet Gisli. After pushing View Stable, you can then push Level Up Pet for a marginal amount of consoles. I do wonder what the gameplay theory is here, other than a slightly monotonous step that doesn't add any fun, sense of surprise, or excitement to the experience, other than to tax the player of time and some money. But these are ultimately minor complaints of a skill I'm enthusiastic to continue learning. Oh, and horses can have backpacks. These are very helpful, yet I tend to forget I even have access to one. After pushing the saddlebag icon to the left of the dismount button, you can view, store, or retrieve items from your steed's pack. I must have traveled past this house a dozen times, yet I've never stepped inside. What's in there? Oh, mantis spies. These mobs would be particularly dangerous to brand new players, so I'm glad I am prepared to take on two at once. But we're here to train the rat. Perhaps the graveyard outside of the crypt is more suitable than the sewers. Let's see. We quickly took that mob down. Ah, huh, my pet is too good at keeping aggro. Or perhaps I'm not skillful enough to keep it alive. I'm going to have to rethink my strategy. I suppose I could have given it a healing and an armor kit prior to battle, yet I'm not sure if those would have kept up with the pace of incoming damage. I think the issue is not the difficulty of each mob, yet the cumulative damage from many weaker mobs. Let's see if I can find a more appropriate setting. Yet, as I make my way towards a more suitable location, I stumble upon a boss I have yet to encounter. Since I'm uncertain of its difficulty, I swap to my more learned abilities, sword and archery. Let's watch. However, I also need to keep his rage meter down to avoid being stunned. 
but I'm not very good at that. He has thick armor, so I need to prioritize abilities that deal armor damage. Yet I still find myself victorious. The pep sound indicates special loot. It's a red necklace named after the bug. To Project Gorgon veterans, are named items better than typical magic loot? I also see that it provides three indirect psychic damage per tick. What does that mean? I ultimately decide it's an upgrade, so I equip it. I also wonder if farming bosses for their unique loot is a reasonable activity for players. But because I can't stay focused, I decide to try my luck leveling my rodent in an even more difficult dungeon. Looking back at my footage is hilarious because I want to slap myself in the past for making this hilarious decision. Just watch what happens. Fair play to pass Moravol for applying a healing and armor kit prior to exploration, so I did learn something from my time in the graveyard. But there's no way I can keep my pet alive through any encounter. Or can I? And like that, add spawn right on top of me. Enjoy the chaos. Okay, to be fair, we're lasting longer than I would have thought. That's what she said. However, these charged pigs, contrary to my opinion of them in the past, are exceptionally dangerous since they're effectively timed bombs if you do not address them early. However, after I die, I can now enter the light. What does this do? I wouldn't call this place light. A NPC is here with strangely intimate details about your character who sells basic items. I presume there's an esoteric quest involving him. However, I see a blue light scattering off the stone walls in the distance and come across an unstable portal to an unknown location. Obviously, I have to go in. And I'm in Sunvale. I have no idea where this is or how to get back. But there is a giant tree in the background, so off we go. Under its branches, Sylvia stands near a burning campfire. I presume she can teach you the skill Druid, although veterans can clarify my presumption. I do recall that the developers have made a change to the skill to make it even more difficult to learn, yet one of my alts is a Druid from before the change, and I in fact hope to cover the skill in a later episode. Oh, a teleportation platform. I can use this to return to Serviel Keep, where I'm bound. But I have no more amethysts. I ride to the top of the platform surrounding the exaggerated redwood giant and speak to Yagrit. My impression is that this zone, like Sirbu Hills, is still in Alpha since there's no congruent sense of a topographical story, grounded ecology, and the NPCs here are skill trainers with no other obvious utility to the area. But at least they're here. As I try to find my way home, I stumble upon some buildings. Oh, while I could likely solo one at a time, this encampment appears to be too difficult to me. But listen to the background music. I love the conflicted whimsy of the dancing melody. I find myself where I originally began in large part because I finally asked in global chat how to leave Sunvale. I'm supposed to ring the bell on the dock. Remember this action because it'll come up again in a later episode. But the emotive text simply indicates that the sound of the bell carries magically far off into the sea. Will this function as the unstable portal? Where could I be going next? Watch the next episode to find out. Thanks for watching.